Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our first CG Guide of the Year, David alongside Paul, and we are um, ready to get started and talking about the best year yet. Is that because of circumstances or is that because of mindset, Paul? You mean, will it be the best year yet because of your certain yes. or because of your mindset? Well, I think I think, um, you know, certainly sometimes your circumstances have to play have play in in what kind of year you have. But at the end of the day, how you approach things, I mean, there's all kinds of research about that. We don't have time right. to go into all that, but certainly your mindset has a big play in that. What you expect and what you um, you know, your expectations will determine what you see this year. They'll determine, uh, you know, how you approach the the year. So, yeah, no and, question. Yeah, and and uh, what's that? No question. Yeah. Expectations and, and mindset will have yeah, a big and, play in that. And, and even you know, kind of even mindset has something to do with <coughs> how you respond to whatever it is that comes your way, whether it be something positive or something negative. Um, you always find that there's that there is. Um, you know, wiggle room for how you interpret that. At least oh, I no found doubt. that way. No doubt. You know, what's the saying? And uh, I think I read something about this a couple of years ago, and but really just started trying to trying to approach life this way as if uh, as if God is working for you. Right. I think the the kind of the secular version of this is that that things happen for you, not to you. Okay. And but really, from a spiritual perspective, just approaching it as if, hey, God is God is working for yeah, me. God is not, for me. He's for His glory, and He's going to accomplish that. But in He's He's also big enough to, while He's accomplishing His glory, while He's bringing glory to Himself, to be working on our behalf too. And right. so God's for us. And so, yeah. if you see things that way, if you just have a general approach to life that way, then you see things differently as they as they come at you. Yeah, and, and if someone was to log into deathclock.org uh, or com, whatever whatever it is, um, and you enter in, it asks you like four questions, like do you smoke, do you drink, and then it asks, what is your general mindset? Cynical, negative, or optimistic? And you have to choose one of those, and it determines how long you're going to live. Right, <laughs> based right, upon right. which one of those you answer. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid to answer that question, but uh, yeah. But it determines how long it thinks you're going to live based upon those things. Well, but but the idea then is that we can put some habits in place. We can cultivate um, this best year yet uh, by some certain actions. We talked about four um, on Sunday. <laughs> When you think about those four things, um, your first of the first of the year, uh, first of the year, first of your um, of your week, uh, the first um, of your um, finances, and the fourth one is <laughs> first of your day, first of your first week. of your day. That was right. the one. First of your right. day. Yeah. So, uh, which one of those is is most challenging for you? I think the first of the week should be pretty easy because you're at church most Sundays. Yeah, yeah, I kind of have to be here most <laughs> most Sundays. So first of the week isn't that big of a issue. I mean, you, you know this, we, we wake up, you know, more excited about That's Sundays. Right. I mean, obviously they're tiring and, and you know, they, they keep rolling around every single week, <laughs> they just but, keep going. but our, our weeks kind of revolve around Sunday. So that's not as big of a struggle. Um, and then you got, wait, what was the first of the week, first of the day, First of your finances, and what was the other one? And first of your year. First That's of the year. Twenty-one days. Yeah. Written in it. That'd, that'd, you know, that'd I, be a challenge, of yeah, course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I always look forward to the new year. Right. So any any kind of new start to me is always super exciting. Um, you know, starting a new school year is always exciting. Okay. Starting a new year. I'm not a big resolutions guy, but I am a big goals guy. And so first of the year is super exciting. First of the day is you know, a little bit of a struggle just because I want to get up and get moving and uh, things kind of come at you, right. um, you know, whether it's email or Twitter feed yeah. or Facebook or news or whatever. Um, and so to, to be able to set aside that time every day yeah. and really focus in on the Lord is, you know, a constant struggle for me. Yeah, th th this year it's, it's actually been better. I, I, I didn't really think of it this way. I kind of took what I felt like was a challenge from the Lord to have this hundred this hundred hours of prayer this year, which I basically determined really quickly. If I don't do that first thing in the day, yeah, right. and it's not my first 20 minutes, there's no way that it's going to get done because, you know, it takes a long time to accumulate that much prayer. And that's been really powerful for me this year. Yeah, that's really, great. Um, it, it's, it's been very powerful. I feel like it's made me a better dad. I feel like it's made me a better husband. Um, I feel like it's made me a better... Uh, a better uh, pastor, um, all those things, you know, kind of do se seem to fall in line um, when that when that. What is that it happens. about it that, that you think makes you better? Well, I think if nothing else, 
I'm meditating yeah. on the presence of God yeah, and the right. presence of God in my life. And, 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 and honestly, part of it is I'm listening. So I sit in the, in the chair, I sit in the dark because I don't want to have any temptation to go pick up my phone or anything yeah, right. like that. And so I think just that meditation portion of it, um, which is of course, seems like, you know, David, King David was so, so adept at that ongoing meditation. Um, throughout, and so I think that, that 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 would be something that probably was true of the life of Jesus as well. Just kind of the way that it seems that he withdrew and he withdrew and he withdrew. Well, obviously he wasn't withdrawing because he, you know, needed to, you know, scroll through some blogs or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> he right. obviously thought that was important. So, well, and I think I think you know that's the that's the big thing to the first of the day. Um, our our lives revolve around a daily yeah. uh, daily rituals. You know, I mean, er, everybody that I know works on a twenty four hour calendar yeah and so we're we're working on, and there's so every, way. if there's so, another way let yeah, us know right so so every day there's a reset you know every day there's a reset and so i think the the you know the importance of that that first of the day thing is is what you're talking about that it's not that hey i'm praying and you're spending that hour pr or that 20 minutes praying and man i'm just seeing miracle after miracle after miracle it's that in that 20 minutes of quiet your your heart's getting centered around yes. the lord and i think the same thing is true you know um whether it's 20 minute whether it's your your time in god's word and you know, I think the struggle for us all is the same struggle we have with any discipline. Right. That it doesn't happen automatically. Yeah. In fact, I, I was reading this morning an article that was talking about, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this on this deal or not, but I'm about to. So uh, it, it was talking about that people, this research showed that one third of people in the country would give up sex for a year if it meant they could instantly have a perfect body, their ideal body. Wow. For a year, <laughs> and so uh, I don't. I don't want to ask no, the, you your comments on this. Too many but, jokes here. Yes. You may insert your own joke right there. Yes, but um, but I was thinking that that's the way we are with this discipline as well. Right. If you could spend, you know, one morning and your your relationship with God would just explode right. from that one morning, I think everybody would do it. Right. But the reality is, it's this culminative effect of just yeah. day after day after day of getting in God's Word, yeah. listening to God's voice spending time in the presence of God, and over time, it just builds up right. in your life. It yeah. just builds up in your life until it, until it explodes. Yeah. So. Now, one that is a little bit different than that is I think, I think <clears throat> people, although you certainly can grow in it, I think that, and, and certainly should, but when it comes to generosity and giving God the first of your finances, um, you know, that's one that, that, that you kind of just have to decide at some point or yeah, another right. that you're going to step over that line and give a priority percentage gift. If, you know, I, I mean, of course, we always talk about with our leadership and whatever, you know, 10% because we believe that there's some biblical precedent for that. But, um, but even if it's 3% this year or whatever number it may be, um, that would be important as well. I, I know right. that it's been super important in, in our lives, and I'm sure the same has been <coughs> true for you and Jill. Yeah, and I think the, you know, the primary thing that that does for me is it just reminds me every month yeah. that, hey, this is not my master. Yeah, right. This, my, my hope isn't in this. My faith isn't yeah. in this. And when, you, you know, when you're writing a check, and, and it's a, you know, it's a considerable right. amount of money that you go, man, I, oh, there's lots of stuff that we could do with this. Yes. You know, we could go to Mexico. We oh, could, hey. uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff we could do with this. And we got kids in college. Or we've got one kid in college right yeah. now, but we got another one on his way and cars and payments and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> You're going, there's a lot of stuff we could do, but this is not, yeah. this is not where our hope is. Yeah. And, and it happened to me just, just this past week, I, I, I bought, um, I bought a used car. And, uh, and I remember as I was kind of looking through, you know, how, how it works on the Internet, you start looking for used cards. They start sending you advertisement for new versions of that vehicle. Right. And they're <laughs> always shinier. Oh, you they're know? so much better and they smell better and whatever. Right. So I ended up buying this used car. But I do remember at one point thinking, you know, if I wasn't doing the change the world and my, my tithe and the gifts above that and all that, I, I was thinking to myself, man, I, I could do that. And, and I'm just saying, I want you all to know that that's very natural, I think, for right. you in the flesh to, to feel that way. But I think that we've got to, you know, as we talked about Sunday, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Because where your treasure <coughs> is, there your heart will be also. And right. I think that's an important part. Yeah, that's good. So I, I want to, and then I want to go backwards to one more thing um, that, that I want us to talk about. Of course, you know, we, we emphasize the idea of God first. And, and uh, you know, in my message, I talked a little bit about, you know, God being central and kind of there's a little mm -hmm. bit of a tension. Sure. But, but, but there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, put him as the first priority. But maybe you would but say But really, so. that's what we're talking about is God being central in your life. Yes, correct. Right. 
And we're talking about this 21 days of prayer, of fasting. I suspect that some of you um, will um, give up some some things uh, in your own life, uh, whether it be, you know, um, for me, I, I always, one of the things I find myself addicted to is caffeine, and I use these things one of the ways to say, I'm not gonna let that master me, um, whether it be food or whether it be lunch or break, whatever it may be that you're, that you're gonna do to focus in the prayer times that we're gonna do at six o'clock. Why is it that this is so important to start your year? You mentioned earlier the importance of starts and new starts. Why is it so important for us to start the first of our year really focused on seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Well, I think it just it just sets us up for the year with the right mindset mm. of, hey, this year, this year, gonna we're going to be looking for God to do some different stuff in yeah. our lives. And, and, you know, honestly, a lot of what God's going to do is because of changes we make that he leads us to along the way. Right. When we start asking God to do something different, that doesn't mean that we're going to sit on our you know, hands and go, okay, God, come on, come on, bring us something right. here. It means that we're going to be open to the Holy Spirit of God leading us and saying, hey, you want me to do something different? Here, here's something you need to leave behind. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a habit you need to let yeah. go of. Really here's, a, here's a relationship you need to drop or a, you know, some, some, somebody you need to pursue some mentoring from. You know, there's all kinds of things like that that I think when we start really praying and seeking God and yeah. asking God to do some amazing things, which we believe that. We believe that God's going to do more this year in our right. lives than He's ever done before and that this really has the potential to be the best year yet. But it's not going to be because God, yeah. because we pray and then we sit on our hands and God just drops all these things. It's yeah. going to be because we pray and seek God and He leads us and guides us. So it's going to be a reset of our mindset. Right. And right. that's what, what the whole point of this is, is that we want to make sure that we don't live our entire lives thinking that what we can see and taste and touch and experience in the physical <coughs> world is all there is. Right. And I think it's important that, um, you know, just, just practically, it's probably a good time for us to mention that during those 21 days, uh, every Monday through Saturday, we're going to have a prayer time that's going to be posted online. I think it's yeah. going to be posted on our on our Facebook page for sure, maybe right. on our website as well. But every morning at 6 a.m. Right. And, um, and, and so Monday through Thursday, it's going to be at one of our campuses. So on Monday is Rockwall, Tuesday is Forney, Wednesday is Sunnyvale, and Thursday is the Kaufman campus. And whoever can come and be with us live will right. be great. But the rest of people are certainly, we would certainly yeah. love for them to join us online and just be a part of that prayer time with us. Yeah, it's going to be really good. There's going to be some prayer and worship time. Hopefully right. you'll, you'll be a part of that. Well, that does it um, for this week one of the best year ever or best year yet, uh, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, but we are glad that you've chosen to be a part of a small yeah. group. You're already doing one of those things by making it a priority to meet with other believers. Um, I hope that you'll make it on uh, Sunday morning as well. God bless you, and we'll talk to you next week.